Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's digital events series, where we will be discussing some of the work that Dr. Peter Kiss and his PhD student has been doing. Um, I'm handing it over to Alex Keen, where he will introduce our host for today. Right. Thank you, Andres. Uh, first of all, welcome to uh, this ISTVS digital event. I see a few uh, a few new names uh, uh, in the audience, which is always good to see. Uh, I'm very pleased to welcome Dr. Peter Kish, former president of the ISTVS, um, professor of biosystems engineering at the Hungarian University of Agriculture and Life Sciences, and also to welcome Peter's lecturer colleague, Nihal Salman. Uh, Peter is going to introduce us to his vehicle technology lab and the research activity therein in terra mechanics and land locomotion. And Nihal is going to give a presentation of her work on the load bearing capacity of soil as a homogeneous finite half space. Dr. Kish is head of the vehicle technology department and laboratory. Having graduated as a mechanical engineer, his research and education fields are internal, internal combustion engines, on and off road vehicles, vehicle mobility, vehicle energetics, and terra mechanics. Peter is part of the continuation of distinguished and active members of the ISTVS based in Hungary and has organized three ISTVS conferences in Budapest in the past, the first in 1991. I remember well the 2007 conference and the memorable conference in 2017. Uh, when he was ISTVS president. Nihal Salman has had a, su a successful career in Iran in lecturing and publishing research in soil mechanics and is currently on a Hungarian government scholarship through the Stipendium Hungaricum Scholarship Program. Hope I've managed to get that one uh, pronounced reasonably okay. I'm very much looking forward to seeing experimental work carried out and the progress made in her research area. Uh, just a couple of points for the audience, please, before I turn over to Peter. Uh, please use the question and answer column option on the right hand side. If you look to the right hand side of the screen, you'll see three headings, chat, people and Q&A. If you pick on Q&A, you can enter your questions there. Uh, and this does help presenters in the chair and particularly presenters and audience for whom English is a second language. Uh, the chat option is also available for messaging. So please use the Q&A to write out questions. Uh, another uh, point which is sometimes useful, at the top right of the session screen, uh, when uh, one of the presenters has shared a screen, you will see three dots. One of the options there is to make a shared screen fill your display. So if you've got a smallish display, then using those three dots, you can enlarge the presentation to fill your screen. So those are the, uh, the words from me to get started. And at this point, I'd like to turn over, please, to Dr. Peter Kish. Thank you, Peter. Thank you very much, Alex. At the first, I would like to share my screen. And do you see my PPT? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, the title of our presentation is a result, uh, research result and uh, laboratory at the Hungarian University of Agriculture and Life Sciences. This is a new name of the university. As uh, maybe you remember, uh, the former name of the university was uh, Szent István University. The university is situated in, in Gödöllő, very close to Budapest, but not exactly in uh, Budapest, 30 kilometers uh, far from the capital of Hungary. We have uh, four campuses in Hungary. One is the main campus, is, uh, the main campus is in the Gödöllő, and uh, we have a campus in Kaposvár, another uh, town uh, in Hungary, and in Keszthely, close to the Lake Balaton, and Gyöngyös, uh, which is uh, about 30 kilometers far from Gödöllő. And uh, by the joint, the four campuses, 
uh, became the biggest uh, agricultural focused uh, university in Hungary and it is uh, the, among the biggest uh, in Central Europe, I think so. So the name of the new university is new, but uh, we are the staff, the laboratory and the education is, uh, is, <laughs> is also new, but uh, we, we, we follow the, the previous ways, of course. And my name is uh, Peter uh, Kish as uh, Alex uh, introduced uh, myself. And uh, I have a co-lecturer partner. Uh, she is uh, Nihal uh, Salman, who is uh, my PhD student. I supervise uh, her research. And she finished the writing the dissertation. Uh, today, we, 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 we did the final checking of the dissertation. And uh, she will produce the hard copy of the dissertation, and within within uh, one and a half and and two months will be the the final defend. And I hope so, very hope so that it will be uh, successful. Uh, the content uh, of uh, my presentation. At the first, I would like to introduce the vehicle technology department. And uh, then I would like to speak uh, about the beginning of the Terra Mechanic research at our university. I would like to introduce uh, for you previous uh, research topic and uh, results. It just will be a flash, uh, some previous uh, uh, result. And uh, then uh, we have a laboratory uh, video and uh, we would like to uh, show uh, it to you and it will uh, introduce uh, the capacity, the research capacity of our laboratory. And at the second part of the presentation, I will give the word to Nihal and uh, she will uh, introduce, deliver a presentation about her research. The, the title of her research is the load bearing capacity of soil as a homogeneous uh, finite half space. And then uh, uh, there'll be a possibility to take the questions. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Kish, your, yes? your screen share has disappeared. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I did, didn't did realize. I tried to do it again. Sorry so much. And do you see now? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Okay. And uh, let's go back to the first slide or can I continue when I finish? I think you can go to the next slide. Okay, good. Okay, sorry. Sorry for this. So this is the introduction of the Department of uh, Vehicle Technology. We have uh, three groups, research group. Uh, at the technology. I am the head of the uh, department. Uh, the one group is the vehicle group. Uh, this group uh, deal with uh, internal combustion engine, especially the theory and testing of the engine. We deal with the uh, auto engine and diesel engine, of course, not only uh, uh, from agricultural aspect, we, we teach the on-road vehicle technology as well, not, not only the off-road and agricultural uh, vehicle technology. And the other topic is the on and off-road uh, vehicles uh, uh, within this uh, category, the hybrid and electric drive as well. And the very important uh, research is the soil mechanical parameters, tire mechanics, and uh, land locomotion and soil tire interaction. As uh, I mentioned, uh, the main focus of the university is the agriculture and uh, originally I am an agricultural machinery uh, engineer and uh, you know that the agricultural machines moving on terrain that's why the the soil tire interaction and the soil track interaction is very important uh, from the agricultural aspect as well. The other research uh, uh, group uh, at the department of the thermodynamics and the drying group. They, they deal with the thermal and fluid uh, dynamics. 
and uh, agricultural products drying because the drying uh, is uh, very important to conserve the agricultural uh, products. And the other group uh, of the department is uh, electronic group. Uh, they deal with the basic of electrotechnics and electronics, electric drive connecting to the, to the vehicle uh, technology and uh, measurement techniques. And as I mentioned, the university name is uh, Hungarian University of Agricultural and Life Sciences. And within the university, there is an institute. The name of the institute is Institute of Technology. And this institute has uh, departments, and one department is the, the Department of uh, Vehicle Technology. And uh, this is our uh, building. It is the Aula building, the, the, the ceremony hall of the university. And uh, in this building, there is the, uh, the, the place of uh, the Institute of Technology and the Department of uh, Vehicle Technology as well. Now I would like to uh, introduce some uh, famous person in uh, Terra Mechanics who started uh, his career at uh, our university. First of all, I would like to mention Dr. Zoltán Jánosi. Uh, he is very famous from the uh, Jánosi Hanamoto equation. It's a very well known equation in uh, Terra Mechanics. And Zoltán Jánosi started uh, uh, his education and research career at uh, our university. That time, our university is situated in Budapest, and later uh, the university moved to uh, Gödöllő. Uh, but uh, Zoltán Jánosi started uh, his career at the Department of Mechanics. And uh, last century, in 1956, uh, uh, that, that was a revolution of Hungary. And uh, after the revolution, he emigrated, first of all, uh, to the Western Europe and later uh, to the United States. And, uh, and uh, now he lives in the States. He is uh, still alive. And uh, fortunately, he has a uh, 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 relatively good health condition, over 90 years old. And I have a personal uh, contact uh, with him. Sometimes we change email and send the greetings, uh, especially uh, for Christmas. And the other uh, famous researcher, uh, uh, Dr. Jörg Komandi, who was the previous head of uh, our department, uh, he deal with uh, tractor and agricultural machine uh, connection problems. And when I started my uh, uh, teacher uh, career, uh, he was the head of the department, and I started my research uh, under uh, his hand. And he also deal with the soil parameter uh, systems. Uh, he he uh, uh, died uh, about uh, 15 years uh, uh, before. And the next uh, researcher, who is very famous uh, 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 in Terra Mechanics, uh, Professor George Shitkei, George uh, Shitkei, he deal with the soil mechanical properties and uh, soil tire interaction, uh, he is uh, still alive over 90, uh, 90 years old. Sometimes he come to the university and give advice uh, to, to me <laughs> and to, the, to our PhD students uh, as well. And uh, very important to mention Professor uh, Lloyd, uh, he is an ISTVS uh, fellow, he was the Secretary of Hungary, uh, within the society, and he deal with the uh, soil tire interaction and oscillations uh, uh, on terrain. And the current current uh, land locomotion uh, research uh, team uh, within the vehicle group at the moment uh, there is one professor. It's me. Two researchers. Uh, uh, senior lecturers with PhD uh, degree. We have five PhD students, uh, 
three of them working on land locomotion topic or terra mechanics topic and uh, two of them uh, working on internal combustion engine uh, research, especially especially uh, reducing the, uh, the exhaust uh, gas uh, uh, pollution content. And uh, we have three master uh, students who take part uh, in the research, and uh, one of them, I very hope that uh, from next, uh, from this September, will be a PhD student and the other two uh, a half a year later or next year uh, uh, can join to the PhD students. And we have a quite large laboratory in the video you will see our laboratory capacity, but unfortunately uh, there is only one laboratory staff. I know it's uh, very few, but uh, it is the possibility at the moment. Now I would like to flash uh, uh, some uh, previous research. For many, many years, uh, we deal with uh, tractor energetics. It was my uh, research topic when I, when I uh, did my uh, PhD. Uh, I uh, measured many, many field tests. It is a traction test uh, for tractors. And uh, we, I determined uh, the tractor energy the balance performance balance uh, uh, during the motion and you can see here a, a performance balance uh, of a tractor and i uh, uh, could separate it, the losses and the useful uh, energy the useful energy is the traction uh, performance traction traction energy uh, and the, the losses are the slip losses the rolling resistance and the transmission losses and it is it you can see that it is in dynamic mode the the sample uh, period was uh, uh, 0 0.1 seconds so it was a very very short uh, time and a very detailed uh, energetic of, of the of the traction and the next uh, research is also connected with the uh, traction, determination of the rolling uh, resistance, uh, rolling losses of a towed vehicle, and we have a very good uh, uh, traction measurement uh, equipment uh, at the university, and here you can see that uh, the, the tractor, which is pulled the vehicle, is uh, going on a different rut, and uh, we could measure the virgin profile before the investigated vehicle and the deformed profile after the investigated uh, investigated vehicle so we got the soil deformation and we could measure the energetics data of the traction so we could uh, uh, measure exactly the rolling resistance and how we change the rolling resistance depend on the soil type and depend, depend on the soil parameter, for example, the moisture content of the soil and etc. And uh, we also investigated the bulldozing uh, effect. Here you can see uh, a picture of the measurement. And uh, terrain profilometer. profilometer it is uh, important when we would like to study uh, the soil deformation, we can measure the virgin profile, we can measure the, the deformed profile, and we can calculate the soil deformation between the, between the virgin and the deformed profile. And you know that that is uh, a front wheel and uh, that is a rear wheel, and we can separate uh, the soil deformation between the front wheel and and the rear wheel, so we can we can separate these uh, two losses, and we can uh, determine the soil deformation energy, uh, the all direction direction. We can uh, determine the longitudinal, the horizontal uh, soil deformation and energy which is the slip which is the slip you know that the the the, the soil particles uh, move on each other 
uh, during the sleep. There is a slip portion in the soil, and the other slip portion is bit on the contact area uh, between the between the wheel and the soil surface, of course. But uh, we can determine the slip uh, portion in the soil. We can determine the vertical and the lateral soil deformation which is the components of the rolling resistance. And we can also determine the tire deformation energy. It was about uh, a 10 years long uh, uh, research uh, with many, many field tests, many, many laboratory tests. And finally, I wrote my PhD uh, from this uh, research. And uh, we could uh, also calculate the additional uh, soil deformation and additional tire deformation because of the vibrations. When the vehicle is moving on terrain, there is vibration, and this vibration needs uh, quite a lot of energy. And we could separate it, this additional uh, needed energy in the tire and the soil, and it is an energy balance, uh, component balance uh, for the rolling resistance. The tire deformation, the additional tire deformation because of the vibrations, and the soil deformation, the vertical soil deformation, there is no slip. There is slip, but is, the slip is not, not here calculated. And the vertical soil deformation and additional vertical soil deformation and the lateral soil deformation. And the, the mistake of the determination of this component is only 2%, uh, percent, but it's not a really mistake because it's the remaining losses. And there could be many kinds of losses which is not calculated, not counted in this connection, it was only 2%. It means that the, the balance uh, accuracy is uh, quite good. And we also deal with the uh, slip. And uh, as I mentioned to you, the slip is became uh, especially two, but uh, in the reality slip, three places. Uh, there is a portion of slip uh, in the soil because of uh, the, the traction force, uh, the soil particles uh, move on each other, and there is a highest portion of slip uh, in the contact zone, in the contact zone between the tire and the soil, and there is a very small portion of slip in the tire. In the tire, because the tire is also deformed, uh, in a, a horizontal uh, direction, but uh, when when the leave the soil, this deformation is uh, is go back to the to the original. But when the contact the soil again, this backward deformation is begin again. So it is the components of the um, on the slip uh, losses. We also deal with uh, uh, the determining of ra rolling radii. When the tire is rolling on terrain, uh, became uh, many kind of rolling ready. It uh, uh, first of all there is the there is the radius of the geometry of the tire. It is the RG. This is the tire uh, radius, and uh, there is another radius between the bottom of the tire, which is connecting uh, to the soil, and the wheel center. It is RCB, the center, wheel center, and the bottom distance. But this radius is not the real radius of the slip and not the real radius of the kinetic the process. The kinetic process uh, is when the resultant of the traction force is situated. It is somewhere here during the traction. And there is a distance between the resultant force, traction force, 
and the wheel center, it is the kinetic rolling radius, and there, there is a slip radius which is connected, which is depend on the slip ratio. If uh, there is a zero slip, what is impossible in the reality, uh, if there is a zero slip, the slip uh, uh, radius is equal to the geometry radius of the tire. But uh, if the slip is, for example, in here 14%, the slip radius is smaller than the, than the uh, geometry radius. It is in case uh, it's positive slip uh, during traction. If there is negative slip, it's also possible. Uh, the slip uh, radius is bigger than the geometry of the tire. So we work out a methodology to determine this uh, slip, uh, uh, this rolling ready uh, during, uh, during traction and, uh, and, uh, and in the soil tire interaction. And uh, here the method to determine the center uh, and uh, the wheel center and the bottom uh, distance this is the uh, displacement uh, curve of the wheel center. We got it uh, with the acceleration uh, measuring. And from the acceleration data, we calculated the uh, velocity vector of the wheel center. And uh, just I check. Do you hear me? Because that was a... Yes, we can hear you fine. All right. Okay, thank you. Just I check it. Uh, because that, that was a signal from my computer and... Uh, okay. And uh, this is... Uh, and then we calculated the velocity uh, vector from the acceleration. And uh, finally, we calculated the displacement function. So this is the displacement function of the wheel center. And we could measure uh, the same time, the terrain profile. And we determine, we could determine the distance between the wheel center and the terrain profile, which is the center, wheel center and bottom distance. It, 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 it was a possibility to determine the one kind of rolling radius because the, the the changing of the center and motor distance is one kind of rolling radius. And uh, we also determine the kinematic uh, rolling uh, radius, which is connected with the slip. If you can see here is how changing as a function of the uh, slip. And also we could determine the kinetic, kinema, kinetic uh, rolling radius. It, it was uh, connecting with the tire inflation pressure and as a function of the tire inflation pressure. And the other uh, research is uh, to investigate the oscillating of the tall vehicle and um, I had a PhD student uh, about five years uh, before, and uh, at his company, uh, the company produced uh, a combine harvester header transportation vehicle. This is the combine harvester header transportation vehicle. And uh, this uh, vehicle is very, very long. And when it's moving on terrain, uh, many, many vibration and, and became, and it could damage the structure of the, of the transporter vehicle. So that was a, that was a really nice uh, research. We uh, tested, uh, we tested the vehicle uh, in laboratory and in field uh, condition as well. We measured many, many data. Uh, 
and uh, and finally that was a phd uh, dissertation about it and the company uh, used uh, or res uh, resolved and still use or result uh, uh, designing the the transportation vehicle and uh, the final uh, it was a very interesting uh, research that was another phd student also about uh, five uh, six uh, years before he investigated the run of road vehicle accident when the vehicle is moving on their own and something happened and uh, and uh, leave the road and run uh, to the into the terrain uh, because of for example there is an accident and uh, it is interesting to calculate how can we calculate the initial speed of the vehicle when it left the road it is a very important uh, a very important data uh, from the, uh, the aspect of investigation of the accident and uh, that was uh, it is it is a real uh, a real uh, uh, research of terra mechanics because when the vehicle uh, left the road uh, became a soil uh, tire soil terrain uh, tire terrain uh, interaction and uh, it's uh, possible to determine calculate the init initial speed of the vehicle so that was a, uh, a research uh, about it and uh, now i would like to speak about the research capacity of uh, our laboratory at the university, there is three big uh, laboratory building. Uh, when the video will start, uh, you will see uh, a picture about the university and then, uh, then uh, a picture about the three laboratories. And the one laboratory building is connected to the uh, Department of Vehicle Technology. And this laboratory building, we have an engine test uh, laboratory with uh, test uh, uh, engine dynamometers. We have uh, four dynamometers, engine dynamometers. Uh, and uh, uh, you can see the vehicle uh, test laboratory. And as of course, uh, we focused the, of the soil mechanics uh, laboratory uh, connecting with terra mechanics. And you will see uh, the thermodynamic uh, laboratory and the uh, uh, electronic laboratory. And uh, now I ask Jenna to open and show the video. The Technical Institute of the Hungarian University of Agricultural and Life Sciences has a modern laboratory complex located on a large floor area. Out of the three interconnected laboratory building complexes, one of the building units supports the teaching and research activities of the Department of Vehicle Technology. The most important fields of education and research of the Department of Vehicle Technology are internal combustion engines and electric drives, on and off-road vehicles, thermodynamics and drying theory, electrical engineering, electronics and measurement technology. In our video we show our laboratory capacity in these areas. There are three engine brake benches in the laboratory of the Department of Vehicle Technology. One of these is suitable for testing the engine in inactivated condition, which can also be used to determine the internal losses of the engines. The highest performance dynamometer can break a maximum of 300 kW of engine power, suitable for setting both manual and pre-programmed load cycles. The dynamometer includes the complete cooling circuit, the measurement of all parameters required for the energy test of the engine, and the conditioned intake and exhaust side together with the necessary exhaust gas test equipment. The dynamometer is suitable for teaching and research tasks, and also be used for engine indication.
The vehicle testing laboratory has undercarriage test equipment and a roller dynamometer. The roller dynamometer is suitable for braking testing through the wheels of cars and vans. The dynamometer has a speed-dependent headwind generator that provides in-service cooling of the vehicle and a mass of inertia to simulate engine braking mode. A complete emission and diagnostic measurement can also be performed during a vehicle test. Both educational and research measurements are common on the roller dynamometer. The soil testing laboratory includes a bevameter, a compenetrometer, a laboratory and inside to soil shearer, a soil moisture meter and a colorimeter. The bevameter is suitable for performing soil tests in a finite half space. The pressure plate is pushed into the soil by hydraulic equipment measuring the magnitude of the force as well as the vertical displacement. The compenetrometer as well as the vein shear can be used for field soil testing. We have a laboratory soil shear device in which the inserted soil sample can be sheared, recording the shear stress displacement diagram. And in case of different compressive stresses, the Coulomb line can also be determined. The moisture content of the soil can also be determined in an oven and by a rapid moisture measurement procedure. A new area of the research is the exploration of the relationship between the soil mechanical properties and the soil color, in which several PhD students are working. The educational task of the Thermal Engineering Group of the Department of Vehicle Technology is to study the subjects engineering thermodynamics and fluid mechanics, as well as the subjects related to the given specialization related to these subject areas, for example, heat and mass transfer, energetics, building engineering, cooling techniques, teaching finite element heat and flow analysis. In order to demonstrate the practical application of the thermal flow processes, machines and equipment taught in the subject, we have a laboratory equipped with a number of modern devices, where students can perform independent measurements and experiments. In connection with the topic of heat transfer, it's possible to present different types of heat exchangers where students can get acquainted with the characteristics of heat exchangers of different designs during the measurements. Currently, one tubular heat exchanger is being measured, but we also have the option of measuring shell and tube heat exchangers of different sizes. For the teaching of energy type subjects, we also have a special examination option here. For example, fuel cell is tested. Another important area of the group's work is scientific research. We have extensive experience in testing and researching various drying processes. We mainly deal with convective drying technologies, but we have also carried out a number of studies in the field of microwaves, vegetable drying. For this, we also have experimental convective and microwave equipment, which can be used to determine the drying properties of different vegetable varieties. We also use our research experience in education, where students dry wheat with a fluidized bed dryer. In addition to the drying properties of the crop, students can also examine the fluidization characteristics during the experiment. In line with the specialization of the group, many graduating students choose the topic of their dissertation for the successful preparation of which our experience in the field of education and research provides significant assistance to the students.
The electronics group of the Department of Vehicle Technology teaches electrical engineering, electronics, and measurement technology at both the undergraduate and master's level. Our subjects are studied not only in the courses provided by the Institute of Technology, but also in other courses of the university. In addition to theoretical training, we also place great emphasis on practical training, assisted by two electrical laboratories equipped with multifunctional, state-of-the-art equipment. In addition to the basic electrical instruments, we have special educational tools for a more thorough understanding and measurement of electrical phenomena. Students learn the methodology of using electrical components, tools, and equipment through independent measurements and experiments. Okay. And now, do you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, okay. And that that was uh, uh, the introduction uh, video about uh, our uh, laboratory. And the next point is the presentation of my PhD student. Uh, she's uh, uh, name is uh, Nihal uh, Salman. She's from Iraq. And uh, she started uh, he, his, her PhD work uh, about uh, five years before, because of uh, in normally the PhD is uh, uh, PhD takes uh, four years, but because of the pandemic situation, uh, she got uh, one year more extension. That is uh, that is uh, became uh, five years, and. Uh, She's topic is uh, the load load bearing capacity, the, the investigating of the load bearing capacity of the soil. And Nihal, I ask you at the first to uh, to say some introduction words about you, and then uh, deliver your presentation. Okay, thank you, Professor. Yeah, do you wish to turn your camera back on? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nihal Daoud Salman. Originally, I'm from Iraq. Um, I uh, am PhD student at uh, Hungarian University of Agric Agriculture and Life Science in Hungary. I was awarded uh, a scholarship to, for doing a, a PhD in mechanical engineering in Hungary. I uh, have done my institutional defense and I'm just waiting uh, for uh, final defense to get graduate. Uh, my background is mechanical engineering. And my research topic is load bearing capacity of soil as homogeneous finite half space. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about a brief introduction about uh, my uh, topic and the objective, uh, objective of my research, then the material and method that I employed, and theoretical model that I developed uh, after that, the result of the experiment, and uh, the new scientific result that, that, that I came up with as well as the conclusion and future work. As introduction, the mechanical properties of soil in the normal direction can be characterized by pressure shrinkage uh, relationship. Multiple efforts have been done to develop this relationship, but still not fully characterized. A very important area of uncertainty seems to be the effect of the loading surface diameter on load bearing capacity as a function of finite half space thickness. Why finite half space? Uh, the agricultural soil tilt between 30 to 40 centimeters. So there are uh, upper loose layer and hard layer underneath. And this hard layer changes the pressure distribution and the hardness uh, in the soil body. And the extension from uh, infinite half space to finite half space is wide, uh, is uh, exists, but not widely known. Uh, the, 
the behavior of the finite half space uh, and changing hardness in the soil body uh, present greatest difficulty to the to determine the road bending capacity of soil and generalize the experimental result. So the current research seeks to investigate the road bearing capacity of soil as homogeneous finite half space. The objectives of my research to investigate the compact zone and the loading surface, developing an equation of the road bearing capacity uh, factor considering the effect of the hard layer, generalizing the pressure sinkage equation and investigate the load bearing capacity of shallow homogeneous upper layer. To perform the experiment, I uh, employed the BIPA meter. Uh, uh, this uh, equipment, uh, we designed and constructed this equipment inside our laboratory. And uh, the, the advantage of this uh, equipment that we can change the soil thickness as uh, we uh, need. And um, to uh, the soil, uh, uh, we prepared the soil uh, First, the soil classified as sandy loam soil with the, uh, with the uh, composition analysis of the clay and sand uh, and uh, salt. We brought the soil from uh, the field, uh, belong to our university, and then we sieved the soil with mesh with the five millimeter, and then uh, we stored the soil in a big soil bin to, to prevent the dryness. After that, uh, to perform the test, we fold the soil bin of the Viva meter in, with the soil in layer, each layer five centimeter. And then after that, uh, we uh, leveled the soil surface to, uh, uh, to make sure the homogeneity of the soil, of the surface uh, of the soil. And then we pressed the soil with different uh, method to get different bulk density. Uh, and after that, uh, we ran, we uh, played the PIVA meter and collect the uh, the data. Uh, we did this uh, steps for uh, uh, many thickness uh, of uh, soil. With each thickness, uh, we uh, perform many place sinkage diameter. With each uh, sinkage diameter, many uh, different uh, soil density. And uh, during the test, I uh, employed a simple method to determine the moisture content and bulk density. I employed the soil, compar co co uh, soil core sampler. I took many uh, samples during uh, each test, uh, and then I weighed the samples to uh, determine the uh, bulk density. After that, I dried the samples in the oven for 24 hours uh, with 160 uh, degree. And um, after that, I weighed the dried samples to uh, calculate the moisture content. Uh, as the, in the same time, I uh, used this moisture content to probe uh, uh, to check the moisture content instantly during the test. Also, we, uh, we uh, uh, used the confined compression test by design small soil bin and apply the pressure from the plate of PIVA meter. And uh, to, uh, uh, to define the uh, mechanical properties of the soil, the internal friction angle and the cohesion, I employed the dark shear test uh, was shown here. As the, the, for the theoretical model that I uh, drive, the uh, drive Yugorov model 1961 was idealized to understanding the effect of the hard layer and, um, uh, the, and uh, uh, for develop, developing the new uh, pressure sinkage uh, equation. Uh, by considering the uh, relative thickness uh, at, at, uh, of uh, two, I uh, could uh, draw the pressure bulk under uh, loading, uh, under loading surface and uh, calculate the pressure for the infinite and finite thickness, uh, the curve one uh, represents the for infinite and two for finite thickness. And as uh, seen here, the pressure uh, increased because of the hard layer. The previous studies showed that uh, there are two deformation zone and uh, two deformation zone and the loading surface. The built-up zone, uh, uh, which uh, the def the pressure increased constantly, and the uh, stationary zone. In this zone, the uh, pressure remained constant. In our case, we have hard layer, so uh, this hard layer changed the uh, uh, pressure distribution and increased the pressure in the soil body. 
so uh, we have uh, a built up zone and uh, uh, interaction zone with the rigid layer and between them the transition zone this transition zone we named this transition uh, transition zone as a breaking point and we uh, defined as a relative uh, sinkage z not over d and uh, we calculate this uh, 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 zone uh, from the uh, uh, Zafi theory uh, the, we calculate the high of the cone shape and the loading surface uh, from Tirzafi theory and after that we uh, by employing a simple uh, equation I could uh, uh, drive the uh, equation to define the breaking point uh, this is the equation and uh, the value here one is um, slightly changed between 1 to 1.07 depending on the internal friction angle of the soil by implying similarity in number, uh, the load bearing capacity factor K depending on the, uh, uh, the density of the soil and the plate diameter, by, uh, um, uh, taking, uh, by taking into account this parameter, I drive the dimension loss number uh, uh, to include this parameter. And uh, by multiplying this uh, uh, dimension less number with the um, a relative thickness h over d i uh, could drive uh, a new load bearing uh, number uh, as uh, seen in this uh, equation this equation is restricted with relative thickness between one and two and the uh, uh, relation for the load bearing capacity factor k as relation of soil density with different relative thickness is shown in this model uh, by uh, by uh, employ by uh, substitute uh, this uh, load bearing number in the conventional pressure sinkage equation, I could uh, uh, develop a new uh, pressure sinkage equation in dimensionless form by taking into account the effect of the soil density and the relative thickness um, uh, of the soil. But this equation is restricted also for the relative thickness between one and two. And the uh, uh, relation of the load bearing uh, load, uh, pressure number as function of relative sinkage and relative for different relative uh, uh, thickness is shown in this model. The result of the experiment uh, by employing uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the linear equation, the failure uh, equation. I could uh, uh, calculate the cohesion of the soil and internal friction angle as shown here. And uh, as can be seen in this equation uh, uh, to check the moisture content, when the moisture content is uh, high, the relative depth uh, uh, Z0 over D is uh, decrease, uh, decrease. So I performed the test uh, with moisture content between seven to nine percent. For the pressure sinkage curves, these uh, curves uh, for a sample of uh, some uh, of, uh, of uh, samples of uh, some experiments, and uh, this uh, table show uh, some of the da uh, data of measurement that uh, we employ uh, that we uh, employed. And as can be seen here, there are uh, two uh, colors for the pressure uh, sinkage curve, uh, which uh, mean that there are two deformation zones. Here are the breaking points, and this is before breaking point, and here after the breaking point. To understand uh, more closely this behavior, I choose this uh, uh, result. Uh, for the soil thickness 18 uh, centimeter and uh, plate diameter 15 uh, centimeter, the uh, breaking point at uh, point two. Uh, so before the breaking point, as can be seen here, the pressure increased constantly. And after the breaking point, the pressure increased in exponential form. And uh, for the uh, uh, for the load bearing capacity factor, uh, uh, the load bearing capacity factor before the breaking point is constant, after the breaking point is uh, more in exponential form. 
So from this behavior, I could uh, uh, develop a um, uh, new equation for load bearing capacity factor. Uh, we named this uh, uh, load bearing capacity factor as K apparent, and this equation is applica applicable for the break uh, before the breaking point and after the breaking point. Uh, so. This uh, the uh, experimental result with the new equation of the K apparent, and uh, for the uh, to understand the effect of the finite depth on load bearing capacity factor, uh, by implying the uh, the model that we uh, developed, uh, as can be seen here, the uh, the experimental result was in a good agreement with the expected model. Uh, as um, so uh, with expect with our expected model and uh, the proof for dimensionless uh, number uh, that is constant uh, is shown in this figure as can be seen here for uh, uh, there are two lines uh, for uh, relative uh, uh, relative uh, thickness uh, the first line for relative thickness between 1.822 and the second one for the relative thickness between 0.9 to 1.2. And ask, despite the scattering in the result, uh, it seems that the, 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 the load bearing number is constant. So uh, it is concluded that the, uh, uh, we can generalize the pressure sinkage equation by taking into, uh, taking into account the uh, effect of the relative thickness and uh, soil density and the experimental result for um, uh, this uh, figure shows the experimental result with uh, uh, our uh, model and uh, as can be seen here the experimental result was in a good agreement with the expected model uh, so, uh, because uh, theoretical consideration uh, indicated that uh, because of the interaction be be between the compact uh, soil cone and the hard layer, the hard band pan, so there uh, the uh, definite increment uh, load bearing capacity increment uh, may be expected. Uh, so the relation of the uh, N increment delta K of as function of the soil density with the different relative thickness is shown in this figure. As can be seen here, the effect of the uh, relative thickness is uh, high, has higher higher influence on the N increment than the soil density, and this influence is shown in the other uh, figure. Uh, in this figure, as uh, can be seen, the load bearing uh, N increment uh, decrease when the relative thickness uh, increase. To uh, uh, to investigate the behavior of uh, uh, shallow layer uh, by uh, the uh, the result of the experiment from the confined compression uh, test and the uh, the for, and the result from the uh, pivometer test uh, is shown in this figure and by employing the this compaction equation. Um, we uh, we can uh, see the behavior of the soil for the relative thickness less or equal 0.5 the behavior of the soil in the uh, uh, open space is like a closed space and the pressure increases steeply and the, the deformation and that the loading uh, surface is uh, there uh, there is uh, uh, in the vertical direction there is no side motion for the soil and uh, uh, so there is no uh, cone shape developed under the loading surface uh, uh, and um, um, so the, the the soil behave like a closed space as a new scientific result that i came up with from this research for the transition zone of infinite to finite thickness, I introduced a relation to specify this transition zone by this equation. Uh, and uh, for the interaction zone with the rigid air, I introduced an apparent load bearing capacity factor uh, to um, uh, taking into account the effect of the hard layer uh, from uh, this equation. For generalizing the pressure sinkage equation, I draft and determine a dimensionless load bearing number uh, as uh, shown here. And by employing this uh, number, 
uh, I uh, could generalize the pressure sinkage equation to be in this form, uh, in uh, dimensionless form, and taking into account the effect of the soil density and the uh, relative uh, thickness. For shallow homogeneous upper layer, uh, through the experimental result, I have proven that in the case of shallow homogeneous upper layer, where the H over D less or equal 0.5, after pre-compaction, the pressure and load bearing capacity are steeply increasing, almost the same as closed space. As conclusion for my this uh, presentation, all, uh, all the pressure sinkage equations showed that there are two deformation zones, the built-up zone and the interaction zone. The transition zone defined between the deformation zone by breaking point as a critical, uh, critical relative sinkage, that not over D, and new load bearing capacity factor uh, developed to cover the zone after breaking point. Uh, a dimensionless number proposed to generalizing the experimental result, the result of shell homogeneous upper layer, shall the soil and the loading surface behave like closed space. As a future work, uh, further experiment uh, work with inhomogeneous soil in the field and the lab laboratory should be carried out. And also, uh, we are planning to uh, uh, test another soil type. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Nihal, very much. Uh, and uh, now it's possible to answer the questions. Uh, we have, uh, I have got some questions. Uh, I can see, Peter, that the first question, if I scroll down, you've partly answered uh, uh, with, a, with a reference. Shall I read the question out? The, the okay. first one was, uh, hello, Professor Keish. Uh, did you find a mathematical relation model for determining the slip radius of the tire when the wheel is slipping? Okay, Th thank you for this question. Way. It's a very interesting question. And I partly uh, answer uh, that I sent uh, an article of me about, uh, about the slip. I send it to the question and answer section. But now I would like to give uh, some uh, answer for this question. There is no mathematical relation model. There is no model. There is equation. So if we know the actual slip, we can calculate the slip radius exactly. There is an equation. The slip is depend on uh, very uh, 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 much parameter lot of parameter for example in uh, uh, initially uh, depend on uh, the the magnitude of the traction force because there is no traction force there is no slip if there is traction force the slip should be became because it's uh, not a fixed connection between the, the the soil and the tire and the slip is became and depend on the the contact area uh, uh, it depends on the tire inflation pressure because the tire inflation pressure is modified. The contact area depend on the quality uh, and the condition of the tire, of course, the pattern of the tire, and it's many, many, many par parameter influence to the slip. But uh, for the slip radius, there is an equation if we know the actual slip value, we can calculate the slip radius very well. This is the question, but this is the answer. And if if uh, the questioner has a more question about it, I I will give you answer. I suggest to write me an email, and uh, and uh, and I will I will uh, uh, give answer, or we can talk via Skype or any any other on online platform and the other question is come from uh, alex comes from me yes i yes, tested uh, your i tested your link just now uh, peter and it takes you to the science direct and the summary of the paper that you referred to uh, so that that does work well 
Uh, the question I put in partly links to the one you've just been talking about. Uh, and, and that is, if I just show more on here, um, you started your talk and you referred to the history and you reminded us of, of uh, Dr. Yanoshi starting in, uh, uh, in Hungary. And uh, then you talked later on, you talked about some of the work you were doing on energetics and uh, uh, the rolling radius and so on. And uh, re reminding me of, of things that, that I've been involved in the past, um, I found the Yonoshi and Honomoto equation, if I pronounce that, uh, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it quite right, uh, has been very useful for large, low pressure agricultural cars, rear wheels, particularly on, 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 on tractors. Uh, and uh, so if I read the question, missing part of the Yonoshi and Honomoto equation, which often works well with large, low pressure agricultural drive wheels, is a good model for rolling resistance. Uh, from the work that you went on to describe uh, further on in your talk, uh, have you made progress on predicting rolling resistance for large, low pressure tires? You, 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 came, you, you, you uh, highlighted a number of factors. Can you actually predict those from independent measurements? If so, this would be quite interesting to a lot of people. Okay. Uh, I would go back uh, to to a slide uh, now. I hope so that uh, I can share. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think. Do it's... you see? Do you see my screen now? Yes, we do. Thank All you. All right. And let's go back to that slide. Here is uh, th this is the components of the rolling resistance, and uh, I I not uh, modify the equation and I'm not modify the model of the rolling uh, resistance, for example, the Yanoshi or the other model, because there is many, many model in, in, in the literature of terra mechanics to determine the rolling resistance. Many, many models. Becca <laughs> model, Goryachkin model, Yanoshi model, etc. That's many, many models. But uh, it was a new in my research that I could determine and I could calculate it the additional uh, soil deformation energy and the additional tire deformation energy which is caused by the vibrations. If, if uh, the terrain would be an absolutely flat and there wouldn't be any vibration there will be a rolling resistation because mm. the tire and the soil will deform but if there is a terrain profile which is not flat became a vibration and the vibration need extra mm. energy for the motion and in this in in my research in this my research that was new that I determined, I calculated, I, uh, yeah, uh, the, this additional vibration, additional uh, losses uh, of uh, the rolling resistance. Okay. This is my answer. Yes. Uh, have you got uh, published papers in, in conferences or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I have yes, conferences. Yes. Uh, not, not only one time. It was uh, ooh, uh, 15, about 10, 15 years before. Yeah. I, I, can, I can send you some publication, uh, proceeding publication. Okay. About. What we, we do with the, um, uh, when we finished and the, uh, uh, the, the presentation goes to YouTube, we put a link in the resource initiative. And if you've got any further information, such as references used in the papers, we can add those uh, in the resource initiative uh, link. So um, if, if you do have anything, then it would be very interesting, I think, to add that, because that's one of the areas I always found difficult was trying to uh, come up with good predictions of, of, of rolling uh, resistance and uh, I think at one time I was using Brixius rolling resistance and Yanoshi and Hanemoto uh, thrust equations. Uh, I got a reasonable result so I wasn't too worried about that. But, okay. uh, 
Thank you for that, uh, okay. Peter. And I have one more question, if I see well. Yes, uh, it is about the runoff road vehicle accident connected with the runoff run, run uh, run road vehicle accident. Did you perform experiments or simulation to investigate the validity of the mathematical model and the final results of the runoff vehicle speed? Okay. Uh, yes, the answer is yes. We had a contact that time, the road accident investigators. I, I don't know which is the best English words for it. That person who, uh, that, for example, an accident happens and uh, there is an expert person who go to the accident after the accident, of course, and, and investigate uh, the 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 how can i say the 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 situation and investigate the situation and try to determine what happened in the reality that is the accident investigate investigator and uh, and we uh, consulted many uh, person who investigate the accident and we got uh, uh, parameters from real accidents and we could compare with our measurement uh, data because we measure the rolling resistance and, and we, we, we measure the, the friction resistance between, between the vehicle body and the soil. We turn off a vehicle in reality and pull on the soil and investigating the friction coefficient between the vehicle body and, and the soil uh, for many cases. So we had a many, many measurement uh, data. And finally, we could compare with, with the real accident uh, uh, data. And that was the validation of our model. This is the answer. And uh, we got... I think the next question is for Nihal, uh, Peter, if, yes. uh, uh, if I read it out. Uh, the question is, what was the range of loads applied to the soil with a bevimeter? Was the load or were the loads representative of the typical vehicle that you will drive over soil? So I think it, it's really generally asking how do you relate the work you've done to practical uh, application to real wheels on in uh, presumably mostly agriculture uh, but also generally yes uh, thank you uh, the uh, the maximum pressure that uh, uh, of the hydraulic cylinder that we employed is 80 bar and the maximum uh, load for the our uh, uh, load cell, uh, the uh, force sensor is 30 kN. So this is the capacity that we can uh, measure uh, for the load. And the second part for the question, Nihal? Yes, we we uh, we yes, tried yes. to we tried to uh, make it like a real in the field but uh it's still um like not 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 the the as the uh, real uh, uh wheel yes but the the range of the pressure yeah the there. range the maximum pressure we that we can uh, employ in our uh piva meter is 80 bar this is the maximum pressure that we mm -hmm. Okay. We could uh, apply. Yes, that was the maximum, but the investigated pressure is uh, was parallel to the typical pressure under yes. uh, under the tire. Yes. Yes. So the second part uh, for the answer, the answer for the second part of the question is definitely yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Right. The uh, the next question, uh, Peter. It looks as if it's going back to the uh, uh, to the rolled over car um, situation. It's from Sergei. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, but something like Bajichev. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you please 
Uh, could you tell, please, why did you need the initial velocity of the rolled over car? What for? And what was the main idea to calculate it? Uh -huh. uh, thank you. Thank you, Sergey, this question. And uh, just to cl clarify the question, uh, he means uh, that uh, when the vehicle is turned over and, uh, and uh, slip on its body, this is uh, this is the question. I asked. Uh, not too uh, too sure if if uh, if uh, Sergey could either sort of add a because he wrote that rolled over car. Right. I can't remember the situation back, but if if uh, if Sergey would like to sort of um add something then we can we could come back to that one possibly um george uh, mason's got a question here peter i think this one's probably for you because you did talk about it briefly uh you indicated no tractive force uh, is equivalent to no slip assuming tractive force is defined by torque radius could there be a situation where no torque is applied and the slip occurs have we got that right George yes yes just a moment please I don't know if whether George uh, would um, if you come and ask you um, if he wants to join us, he could join, uh, come up and ask. But uh, yes, yes, uh, George is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hand, Hi, George. Hand over, hand Hi, George. Hand over I, I understand your question. Okay, the the answer is definitely yes, because there is a braked braked wheel, and we pull the wheel. There is there is no traction force. There is no traction torque, but uh, there is a braking force of course and there is slip there is negative slip of course the assumption is is uh is that traction is defined by torque times the radius yeah right the, the slip piece depend on very highly depend on the horizontal force this horizontal force uh, could be positive uh, came from the torque, the driven torque, or could be uh, from the baking, breaking uh, uh, torque, the baking, breaking force as well. And the slip could be positive and negative on a, on a, uh, in a uh, driven wheel, there is a positive slip and a braked wheel, there is an, uh, positive and on a brake wheel there is a negative slip and if there is no slip it's the zero slip it's a nearly impossible condition i think so in my opinion uh, within the soil tire interaction because there is uh, deformations and there should be a force exchange between the wheel and the and the surface uh, between the soil this so is my so opinion so you're saying there has to be torque applied before slip occurs, whether it's negative or positive. Okay, okay. Okay, and uh, Sergey Sergey wrote, yes, about the velocity, the car lost the main road. Yeah, and what was the question? Let's see to Sergey, could you, could you yeah. uh, please, why did you need that initial velocity? Oh, it's a very easy, uh, thank you, Sergei, uh, because uh, it's, uh, uh, when, when an accident happened, it's a very important what was the initial speed <laughs> of, of uh, when the accident happened. It, it, is, it is all the time a very important question. Yeah, presumably it gives you a measure of the starting kinetic energy, uh, yeah. Peter. Yeah, yeah and, and the kinetic, the kinetic roll, energy, it's zero. 
Yeah, and the kinetic energy, there is an initial kinetic energy of the vehicle because of the, uh, the motion of the vehicle, and this yeah. kinetic energy became zero when the vehicle is uh, run uh, out of uh, the road and moving on terrain and the rolling resistance and the losses and the friction between maybe the body of the, of the vehicle and the, and, and the surface uh, eliminate this uh, kinetic energy yeah and uh, this is this is a very uh, nice uh, topic uh, when uh, the accident investigating uh, area and the terra mechanics is joined right uh, i think uh, andres has added a, a fairly dry question or a um uh uh, in yeah, the yeah, yeah, that, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We need and, to know and, how fast the driver was going so that uh, we can determine whether he was speeding or not. I'm not sure if that's more of a, a comment, uh, a, a humorous comment, rather than uh, um, than a, a one for you, Peter. But I, I can see the point he's making. Yeah, yes, Andreas, it is one point, and the other point: who will go to the prison? For example, uh, possibly, yes. Yeah. Uh, just one for Nihal, just a, a, a sort of short general question, Nihal. What's, uh, you had cohesion and you had friction in the soil. So yes. was this a, 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 a soil that you made up or have you done tests with a range of soil uh, with different levels of, 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 of sand and different levels of, of uh, uh, clay particles to see whether the effects change and whether the model changes? with soil composition uh, actually we we did this uh, calculation just for the same soil that we applied load on the uh, in the piva meter inside the piva meter not uh, we didn't change the composition of the soil uh, maybe as future work i don't know yeah 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 i think it will be another research with another student Okay, so plenty of, as, as, as uh, Paul A has said uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, more work for the engineers. <laughs> so that sounds good. Well, um, I think uh, at, at, at this point, we've, we've had uh, uh, some quite good, there's, there's plenty of, of ideas that you, you brought back up again, Peter, and they've rem you've reminded me of quite a few of the questions I used to have, which uh, uh, need answers. And I think... Uh, Again, it, it almost brings that that point that Peter A, uh, Paul Ayers, not Peter, sorry, Paul Ayers was making, that uh, the more we find out, the more we need to know, uh, and uh, that does seem the case. But there's certainly plenty of ideas and things to think about in both of your presentations, uh, and uh, I, I, I thank you a great deal for all the time and effort you've put into giving us a really good uh, uh, good session. So thank you, Peter, and thank you, Nihal, for a, a, a really good uh, uh, terabyte session. Uh, and also thank you to the audience. And uh, as I said, uh, uh, we still got uh, new names. Uh, sorry, we've still got a lot of people still with us and uh, quite a few new names that haven't been on here before. Uh, and so from that point of view, uh, what I'd like to do is hand back to Andres and he will give you some information about the next terabyte uh, uh, session. Uh, and I think it's one of uh, his colleagues and he'll know much more about it than I do. So I'm going to hand you back to Andres to tell you about the next terabyte session. And Peter and Nihal, thank you very much for your time and effort on uh, Alex, giving, Alex, giving your just, just, a, just a word, hello to me, so please. Much. Just a word, Alex, hello to me. It's All okay. right, hello. Okay, okay. We, we I mean, uh, Nihal and me were uh, very, very happy to introduce uh, our research and uh, laboratory and the university and department. And uh, thank you for your coming and the questions. And, and uh, if you have uh, more questions about topic or you would like to visit at the university, we, we will be very happy to receive you. Uh, okay. uh, so thank just, you so much. Thank you. Just one thought, Peter. Uh, you mentioned if people have got any further questions, uh, they could um, send you an email. If you're still able to add your email into the chat, or yes, but... we can add it uh, when we do the posting on the resource initiative page, then we could uh, add a link there. 
But if you've got a minute just to add your email under chat, then there yeah. may be one or two people who have found. Certainly when we look at the, uh, the presentation again, I think there were a few things in your presentation uh, around energetics and rolling resistance that uh, um, uh, a, a few people are going to find interesting. So thank you very much indeed for, for, for both of you for your time and effort. And I'll hand you back to... Uh, Andres to tell us about the next session. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you, Alex, for that introduction. Um, so this is uh, the end of this presentation. Next week, the presentation will be uh, with Dr. Tienes Buerta. He's one of my colleagues, and he will be presenting some of his work on based on uh, camera-based measurements in vehicle uh, dynamics um, applications. So look forward to the emails, um, or you can visit the website when the event is uh, available. Then you can register, and then we will see you then for that that session. So uh, thanks everyone, and have a lovely morning, afternoon, evening. <laughs>